Hello, everyone. Uh, Tim Tetrick, uh, Partner Technology Strategist with Microsoft, and just wanted to spend a couple minutes walking you through how you can leverage the Azure Pricing Calculator uh, to price out a very simple VM-based solution in Azure. So from Azure.com homepage, I'm going to go up to Pricing to get to the calculator, scroll down here, and we'll see the Azure Pricing Calculator right here. So let's launch that. Uh, the first thing that we'll want to uh, price as part of a VM-based uh, solution is, of course, the virtual machines themselves. So I'll choose virtual machines. And we'll go down and view that. So the first thing uh, is that I can give custom names to these services. So uh, if I have multiple VMs as part of my solution, for example, I might want to put custom names on it. In this case, maybe we're looking at uh, domain controller number one. Uh, we'll put as the as the the label on this VM. Um, next, we want to choose uh, the region uh, where we want um, uh, the service, in this case, the VM to reside. We'll choose West US. Uh, we'll choose the operating system. So you can see Linux or Windows. Under Linux, we have a number of uh, different types of Linux uh, OS uh, machines to pick from here. In this case, we'll choose Windows. Um, and under Windows, we can choose the Windows OS only, um, or we can choose the Windows operating system with BizTalk Oracle SQL Server on top of it. Now, many of you know that when you uh, provision a Windows virtual machine in Azure, the licensing costs for Windows are included in the compute charges. Um, likewise, if I choose, for example, SQL Server, now I can either bring my own licensing with SQL Server if I have SQL Server on premises with Software Assurance, or I can provision a Windows VM in Azure with that SQL Server licensing, again, uh, the, the pricing uh, included in the, uh, the compute charges for the VM. Uh, but in this case, let's just say uh, the operating system only for Windows. Uh, next, we're going to choose the tier. Uh, basic tier is really for kind of you know dev test type workloads. Uh, low priority. Um, that is for uh, when you're doing like batch processing type workloads, um, where uh, essentially low priority it allows you to leverage excess capacity that's available uh, in Azure, um, but that. Capacity may or may not always be there when you need it, um, so it's perfect for you know again batch processing uh, jobs and things like that. But for typical workloads that you're going to be running in a production environment in Azure, you'll want to choose the standard tier. Uh, next, you're going to choose your instance size. Now you can see here lots of instances to choose from, right? Um, very popular are the general series VMs, which are the A's and the B's and the D's. Um, but if you need help here, um, uh, over here under more info, lots of great uh, help that can be provided here if we go and launch uh, the pricing details. You can see we can get lots of great information on the different VMs that are available out there. Again, the general purpose VMs, but also more information around the compute optimized VMs, memory optimized, storage op optimized, GPU VMs. Lots of great information and help out there uh, for you deciding uh, what VM is right for your need. Um, I'll also say that you know there's a lot of third-party tools out there that can help with this. So tools like um, BitTitan's Health Check for Azure uh, is a tool that will, for existing workloads, um, you can install the tool. It'll run for a couple weeks, uh, analyze the utilization on the machine, and then map that and right-size that into uh, an instance size in Azure. So another great way to get at that instance size. In this case, we'll choose this uh, D1 VM, which is a one core, three and a half gig um, of RAM VM. Um, I can also choose uh, billing options. So you see here, I can look at regular pay-as-you-go pricing is what we're looking at here. Um, but I can also look at uh, reserved instance pricing, one year and three year reserved instance pricing. So a lot of you may be familiar, Microsoft announced reserved VM instance pricing uh, not too long ago. Um, we can look at that pricing. Not yet available in CSP, as many of you probably know, um, but is coming very shortly. Um, we can also look at pricing uh, leveraging the Azure Hybrid Use Benefit. So if you're not familiar with the Azure Hybrid Use Benefit, it is a uh, benefit of software assurance with Windows Server on-premises. Um, it allows you uh, to create VMs in Azure at a, at a, a very reduced rate, uh, up to 50% uh, reduced rate. So essentially what you're doing is, if I have Windows Server uh, uh, on-prem today with software assurance, it allows me to spin up VMs in Azure um, that 
uh, without having to repay for those Windows licensing costs. So they're included as part of that. So I'm essentially spinning up a VM in Azure at the Linux rate or the non-Windows rate. So if I'm in that scenario, you see I can turn on the hybrid use benefit. You can see here for this D1 uh, VM that we've selected, it represents about a 45% savings if you can leverage that Azure hybrid use benefit. Again, great benefit for folks that are running Windows Server on-prem today with SA. So we'll turn that off for now. Um, so how many VMs uh, of this size uh, do I want to price? We'll say just one VM here. And we'll look at 732 hours per month. That's what we consider a month uh, in Azure. Um, but keep in mind, one of the great uh, things about Azure is, is if I have a workload that doesn't need 24 by 7 access, I can set up automation to automatically turn that VM off maybe on uh, in the evenings or on weekends, save a ton, ton of money on that VM. And so I have the flexibility to choose how many hours per month here. Um, so that's the VM itself. We also want to look at um, storage. So the preferred way to do storage with VMs in Azure is via what we call managed disks. So uh, we'll let's pick our managed disk here. We can decide either between a standard or premium managed disk. Standard is a hard disk drive based spinning disks, and premium managed disk is based on SSD solid state drives. So let's choose maybe a premium disk here. You see lots of different disk sizes, all the way up to four terabytes that we can choose. Um, but in my case, let's just choose a 128 gig disk, and I just need one of those. I can also optionally add pricing if I want to uh, do snapshotting of those disks. Okay, so we have the VM itself. We have uh, the storage defined in this very simple example. Another thing that you're going to need to price as part of a VM-based solution, however, uh, is uh, bandwidth. So we'll choose bandwidth here. So essentially in Azure, you don't pay to put information in to Azure. You only pay to store it. But any data coming out of Azure gets charged what we call bandwidth charges or egress traffic charges. Um, you can see here the first five gig per month of data transfer out of Azure is free uh, each month. Um, but if I'm going to have more than that, I'm going to need to estimate what that is. Can be difficult to estimate in some cases. Again, can sometimes use third party tools to help estimate on existing workloads work what that might look like. The good news is that even if you're off by a lot, um, it, it's generally a, a relatively small percentage of the overall solution. So in this case, if I look at 50 gigs of egress traffic every month, which, you know, depends on the workload, but that's generous in a lot of cases, I think, um, you know, we're only looking at $3.91 out of the solution at this point. So there's bandwidth. Now, another thing that we might want to price, um, not always, but in a lot of cases, we'll want to price a VPN gateway as part of this solution. So we'll choose the VPN gateway. So we'll go down here. We'll choose, again, the region where we want this service to reside. We're going to choose whether we want a VPN gateway or an express route gateway. So express route gateways um, are high performant, low latency, very secure because they are a dedicated connection that doesn't go over the general internet, but they can also be um, expensive. So let's just choose a regular VPN gateway here. Um, there's a number of tiers of, of VPN gateway to choose from. Again, uh, the more info is your friend over here. Go over and let's uh, pop out in the pricing details. We can see here under VPN gateway pricing, there's the different gateway types. There's the pricing, uh, the bandwidth, um, the tunnels, the site to site and point to site tunnels that are included. So I can get that essential information again as if I have questions as I'm working my way through the calculator. So we'll go ahead and say, you know, this isn't always on. So we'll do 732 hours for the month. Internet uh, or inter VNet data transfers, don't have to worry about that. In this case, that's only if you have multiple virtual networks in different geographies um, that are, are talking to each other. So we don't have to worry about that. So we look at a total solution, again, this very simple example of about $152.46 per month. Now, the, one of the great things about this calculator is that I can now export that estimate into uh, an Excel spreadsheet. So let's just do that quickly gives you really a nice little quote that you can, or an estimate that you can, you know, leverage yourself, you can share with customers, whatever the case may be. Um, but as soon as this launches here, we'll get to see what it looks like. So you can see here, here's my estimate. It shows me the service types. It shows me those custom names, the region, the description. We'll uh, line item this out into a monthly and annual cost to leverage. So uh, that's it for now. Just wanted to show you again a very simple example of pricing out a VM 
uh, solution in Azure. And maybe next time we'll look at how to price out a backup solution, maybe a uh, Azure Site Recovery solution for, for doing disaster recovery. But that's it for me for now. Thanks.